Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Battle Brothers, where we are playing with Mord's Marauders, a group of Northern Raiders, who started all the way... Whoa, that was not intended. Apparently, pressing shift zooms you to your current location. Things you learn. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. All the way up here in Nor, and we are still very much hostile to these northern powers. Um, the blue guys still have their three cities, these guys still have their five, and then the ones that we are friendly with basically owns the rest of the world, so we kind of got a bit lucky there. Or unlucky, because it also means that we have less um, caravans and stuff to loot. In the meantime, we have been trying to raise 2,000 crowns. We did briefly hit 3,000, but I didn't let enough time to tick over before going and spending it all. We bought ourselves a couple of new hounds because a bunch of them, oh, a bunch of them by one, I mean that by one, uh, died. But we do still have some dyes that we can sell, which we actually managed to buy at cost, which was quite impressive. Uh, we are still in Schwarfenstein. Well, I was kind of hoping there would be some contracts, but apparently there are not. Were there any in Sonnenfels? I think we're going to go down to Treaton and see where we can go from there. <clears throat> Why is most of the world controlled by one faction? It's just the way that it's um, spawned. What's the name of this world? This is... Mordred, I think. Yeah, otherwise we would have all of these raid, uh, trading caravans to go and raid. Never mind. Aha, a contract. Excellent. Dust covers Thorismund of Triton's table, but there is a spot oddly clearer than the rest. He guessed us to it. Alright, so we need to go and lootify. A bit more? Okay. I accept. Let's go and hunt these guys down. Shows you the seed in the escape menu. Map seed, Mordred. So we've done Vikings, we've done Vinland, and this is Mordred. Been wanting to try this game, is it any good? I like it, I really like it. So, yes. <laughs> How are we doing for food supplies? So long as they don't chase me too far, we should be okay. Although there is a big freaking open space over this way. If we go down to about 15, I probably will need to back off. Overgrown foundations, eh? I'd love to be able to see what was in there. Why does it feel like these guys are getting away from me? There's only five of them. What are they? A singular thug and then some raiders. So it's basically one thug and four raiders. How far are we going? Quite a long way. Might actually be closer to Krumvada by the time we catch them. Finally. Ah! The thieves are quite human. A simple crew of vagabonds and brigands. They arm themselves as you order the men to attack. So I think the world which was Viking was probably the best balanced. It's just that my last series, which was a long series, was in that world. And I think Vinland was also familiar. I don't remember why exactly Vinland was familiar. Hmm. Because the series that we did immediately before this, where we died, that was the uh, Lone Wolf. That was on Vinland. Okay, so they have two guys in chainmail. None of them, well, one of them is wearing a helmet. So our flails are going to be extremely useful here. They do have a couple of two-handers, which we three-handers. Three of them have two or more handers, so we will need to try and kill them before they get to us. We forgot to see if my wounded characters were good for a fight or not. Okay, I must admit I was hoping you'd get a bit closer, but none of... Neither of these guys are going to be able to swing at us. So I am fairly happy to just sit back here and... Spears up! Because they're going to be trying to jump up here. Let's 
Let's give him one hell of a hard time. 49, 13, 21, 20, 19. Well, I guess it has to be this guy. Missed. Missed. And we will stay here. I do kind of wish I'd made one of these guys go into spear wall. Otherwise, that's going to happen. Wait. Oh, he can already swing at us. That's a good point. Um, oh, well. Ow. Seriously? How good is this guy's defenses? Are you going to advance on me or not? Am I going to have to go to you? Looks like I'm going to have to go to you, doesn't it? You don't have any armor I want. In fact, you are the only thug here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step up to this spot. Which means that you are now too close to really use your weapon effectively. And we're going to biff you on the head. Just like that. <clears throat> I see what you mean there. The guy at the bottom of my side looks like Chewbacca. Oh... 76% chance of hitting. I used the wrong attack. Crap. How did you get to here without being stabbed away by these guys, though? Um, you hold there for just a moment. Am I going to be able to kill you without killing your armor? No. No, I'm not. And kill him without taking out the armor, though. That was a headshot, I'm fairly sure. Hits. Kill Brigand Raider. Doesn't actually say where I hit, just that we hit. A hit! A hit! A palpable hit! There we go, now I can biff you. And I get to kill, keep your armor, because that was on the head. We will move... Where's my other flail? Oh, you're there. Here. And you're trying to run away. How cute. Alright, let's go and cause some uh, problems for this guy then, shall we? Huzzah! Move here. Stab him. Move here. Stab him. Move... Here, stab him. <laughs> We're gonna get a lot of armor out of this. This is gonna be a great, great moment for us. Ice Mage, thank you very much for the resubscription. I appreciate that. Three months now. Thank you so much. Huzzah. <clears throat> Let's keep you guys moving forwards. Um, may as well just go and take this guy out, frankly. He's going to try and run. Emphasis on try. Uh, 
And thanks to you being a polearm specialist, you can still stab! Huzzah. Did I take any damage? Two of you got hit, and that's it. And we got all three sets of good armor. And another flail. And a falchion. Sweet. That was actually one hell of a haul. That's a really significant upgrade. The battle over, you retrieve the rare coin collection from the wa wasted clutches of your enemies and prepare to return to Thorismund of Triton. You'll surely be happy to hear of your success. Alright, so what's this? 90, 90, 95. And Mordred has also leveled up, so hide and bone armor. I'm going to put you into regular armor so you look a little bit more respectable. And Grom Buskin can have the significant upgrade. You can have a 75. The end guys are already in Lamella. In that case, Jane. Oh, hell. Chain all round. And suddenly we are really well armoured. Helson can get his scrap metal armour back again. And these two are now in padded. And we've got another flail, which we can give to Mordred. Big upgrade. And Namanda is indeed back. Still using his 65 armor, so... Wait, is that a 65 as well? That's a 75. So let's put you onto the flank, and then have you switch those two around, which means that you get that one. Oh, we should have kept one of the helmets for Namando. Or did we already use them all? I feel like we used them all already. Then the Falchion does 35 to 45 damage. It is a one-handed sword. Yep, it's the upgrade of the short sword. Interesting. Do I have anyone using a short sword still? No, we're all on spears. Sergei is going to be pretty close to using one, or we give Sergei the two-hander. Also possible. Uh, Drewski, pierced arm muscles. They're actually out of operation for a while. Let me switch you two around. Yeah, that's fine. And you two. No, actually, I still want the spikeman on the end. Right, because we're waiting for Wilhelm, who's the other two-hander, the pole armor. Um, 35 to 45. 25 to 55. So the sword is a lot more reliable. But yeah, using the flails, I think, is just working for us, because it is getting us a lot of gear very quickly at the moment. I can't believe that my entire front line is, like, in actually pretty decent armor now. That's a hell of a step up. Yeah, being able to capture stuff really easily is a humongous bonus. Alright, now I just need to get back to town before my food runs out. I'm very tempted to stop by the Overground Foundations on the way. We'll see what's up and then we'll run away if we need to. And also, our repair tools are gone. First chain armor, next power armor. <laughs> Can't make who, who you'll be facing. Attack your own peril and be prepared to retreat if need be. All right then, let's see what we are up against. 21 of them. No. <laughs> Bye. And they're slow as hell, so they're probably undead. Look how many of them there are. That's ridiculous. One thing which does annoy me is it's not going to tell us what we were up against in the overview of this place. Even though we've now been here and seen... Well, actually, we haven't seen anything. 
So in this instance, it, it makes sense, but usually you see who you're up against, you retreat, and it still says unknown garrison. What are the flanks doing? They're going to the other edge of the map, which is a bit closer to them. See, there's only two tiles away where these guys are like three or four. Yeah, you heard it. Making tea. Got the emotes going. I approve. I heartily approve. Tea! Retreated after five rounds. You mean it took us five rounds to retreat? Right, onwards. I love that emote. That emote is going to get so much use. It's going to be great. Those were zombies. Yeah, I'm fairly sure they were. And we got the money. Unfortunately, we cannot trade here. And it's only just become nighttime. We're going to run out of food. Hopefully it gives me a little bit of leeway because the shops are closed. <laughs> there is nothing I can do about this. You open a crate of food to find the last of your reserves. An apple rolls across the bottom, sounding not unlike the grumble of an empty stomach as it rot totters around. So apparently, no, it does not recognize the fact that it's night time and the shops are closed. A few loaves of bread give it some company and there is a piece of meat wrapped in a thick leaf. That's it. When you close the lid and turn around, Arachnos the Butcher is standing there. Hey there, boss. I see we got a problem. So, how do I fix it? Just then, he thumbs over his shoulder, right in the direction of the two war dogs chained up at the stake. No! Arachnos gets angry. <laughs> you shake your head no. Absolutely not. They are part of the company as any man. Certainly some men would rather starve than eat their own. The butcher shrugs. They're just dogs, sir. Mutts. Mongrels. Ain't nothing but a beast that knows its name and little else. There are plenty of pups to find when we need them. Again, you shake your head. We're not killing the dogs, Arachnos. And don't think I don't see the glint in your eye. There's more to slaughtering than animals than just feeding a few mouths. Arachnos can only shrug again. I can't pick and choose what gives me pleasure, sir. But I'll follow your orders. Alright, can we please go to the shop now? Thank you. Uh, that's actually not too expensive. Those prices are god-awful. Those are awful. Those tools are also awful, which is bad because we're out of tools. And the ammunition is as well. Excellent. This place is terrible. Let's move on to somewhere a little bit more palatable, like Brunstadt. And yes, I know there was a contract here. We can always come back for it. Oh, and this has an arrow maker's shed, also known as a Fletcher. Which means we should be able to get more ammunition. Do they actually sell, like, better ammunition? No, they just have different bows. And crossbows, but I really don't want to spend the extra. So those are 148, while if we went to the marketplace... They would be <laughs> 95. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to buy this one. Thanks. And they have more dyes here, which are also a reasonable price. Tools are redonkulously overpriced. Ammunition is very reasonable here. I don't understand why different ammunition is different prices, though. Not all ammo is apparently created equal. 95, 95, 119. Why? Back. We may as well just buy two of them. Cool. I'm going to sell that sword. I'm going to sell the linen as well. 
That'll do. Alright, anyone here I want to hire? Caravan hand, an apprentice, a beggar, a witch hunter, Owen the torturer, grave digger, peddler, and juggler. Good reflexes and hand eye coordination for their profession, so I guess another kind of ranged character. And witch hunters, I think, are also archers. And also lots of resolve, apparently. So we still have no extra tools. That's the thing we're lacking. Because they are very expensive here. And that's true, we don't have a lot of food. Can we buy some more food? Yeah, we can. Let's buy it out. Okay, um, let's do some missions. Let's begin with the easy one. Look, mercenary, this is a strange thing to task you with, but you seem to have a good head on your shoulders. See this dark spot here? Would you be willing to venture that way and find out the Grinning Skull's rest? Um, for the right price. 230. Razor Shrub. How big is Razor Shrub? Razor Shrub is very big. And I'm currently paying out 131. And that mission was worth 300, right? You know what? To get better relations, I'll take it on for now. This should also be a relatively safe one. A man approaches the company. Behind him, you spy a couple of poor families staring on. You're not sure if he's their ambassador or not, but the way he comes right to you with a proposition spoken low and quiet. Listen here, Sellsword. If you go out into the Grinning Skull's rest, come to us first. The rulers of Brunstadt need not bring their greed and lust for power to that place. Leave it to us, all right? We'll pay you well. Before you can say a word, he straightens up and continues on. When you look down the road, those families are no longer around. Seven undead. Armored Vidagungas and Geists. Uh-uh, not interested. Guys down scary. Aha! Found it! Grinning Skull's Rest comes into view and it's immediately reborn upon your map in the best of your illustrative capabilities. Drewski asks if that's all there is to do. You nod. A rough go or an easy one. Awald the Councilman will be waiting to pay you all the same. And... An unknown garrison. We... Suspect is going to be undead, so we could start equipping everyone with axe hammers and flails. Oh yeah, and Mordred leveled up too. That's true. Um, Mordred would like to be better at swording, better at teaguing, and better at healthing, because Mordred has a ridiculous amount of health. Yes. And a perk. Lash and Hail ignore the defense bonus of shield with the flail. That's pretty nice. I don't think you're permanently going to be using a flail, though. I think that you'll probably be a swordsman eventually. Two initiative. 83. Which is... Okay, but nothing particularly special. Oh, the other thing you'll probably want is... Iron Brawny. Fatigue and initiative penalty from wearing armor and helmets reduced by 25%, because Mordred is always going to be very heavily armored. Yes, we'll take that instead. Although I don't know at what point something becomes heavy armor. I suspect anything heavier than leather lamella. Probably. Oh yeah, can you get back into the fight? That's a good question. Yes, you can. Drewski is still injured though. For another one to three days. I'm not seeing any of the defenders of this place. 
Entering Runestart, you're headed off by a familiar face, the man who greeted you just before you departed in the first place. This time, he has a satchel with him. 360 crowns for your silence. Tell the rulers of this town absolutely nothing, and it's yours. They need not know about our deal, they just need to know, not know where this place is. It's important to us with history beyond measure, and all they do is raid and pillage it. Please, accept. Um... I only get paid once if we can get paid twice. No, sorry. My word is my bond. You tell the man no. He begs. You tell him no again. He begs some more. You suddenly realise you've done with this with a woman or two. It doesn't. It's not really a good look. You tell him as much, but the emotion of the moment is far too much for him. He starts to wail, going on about his family name will be ruined by the greedy bastards that run Brunstadt. You tell him that the supposed family name would be spared if, perhaps, he was the one running the town. This does not clear his tears. Well then, I mind to think this was a spot too easy, but an agreement is an agreement, damn right it is. Alright, level two. Let's do this. I need an escort for a caravan to Bockenberg, two days north of here. Will it be dangerous? Of course. Let's talk money. A bit more. I accept. Need some more time. Have you ever lost something you loved? You shrug and answer. There was this girl. The man shakes his head. No, no, not some woman. More important, because I have. They've stole my lockbox. That's how, how, how much? 480? Okay. I accept that contract. Going after thieves, I can do. As long as they're not undead. Although I don't like the fact that we probably haven't repaired everything. Like that. And that. And that. And that. Okay, there's a lot of stuff here that needs to be repaired properly. Give me that padded armor back again. Eighty-four percent. Eighty-four percent's fine. Probably. You're still out. Haggling reduces your relations. I thought as much. Someone in chat said that it doesn't do anything. But it makes no sense that it doesn't. Headchopper's Grotto. Cave has been occupied by greenskins. A few orc young, a few orc berserkers. Nope! And the thing that I'm trying to get the most right now is relations. So haggling is a really bad idea. Alright, good. Eight thieves. What do we got? Thugs and raiders. Ah, the thieves are quite human. A simple crew of vagabonds and brigands. Probably about four of each. That's a fairly large crew. Thug, raider, raider, thug, 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 raider, raider. Um, I'm going to... Move a bit further down this way. Maybe two steps. I think three. Everyone's just going to move three steps down. 